Now, hot on the heels of my Venturi Atlantique 300 review, that incredibly rare French supercar, the lovely people at John Ashley have provided me with this, something even rarer, a TVR with a standard exhaust. Whatever will they come up with next? Now, this is a Tamora, and as you may be able to tell, it is raining, so I apologise for the fact that the car is slightly wet, but seeing as it has been cleaned meticulously ahead of sale, I'm not going to do too much that could scratch this stunning reflex green paintwork. Now the Tamora is a bit of an oddity. You see, in the early 2000s, you could make an argument that the TVR made about three too many cars. You see, the TVR range consisted of the Tuscan, a target top, so near enough convertible, straight six engined, two seater, rear wheel drive sports car. They then had the Cerbera, which you can understand is quite a different thing. That is a coupe with another seat, sort of, and the option of a V8 or the straight six, also rear wheel drive. Then they had the Cigaris, which is a uh, two seater, straight six, front engined, rear wheel drive car, but it is a coupe. So it kind of looks like a Targa, except the roof doesn't actually come off. But apparently it was a bit better than the Tuscan, so yeah, okay, okay. Then they had the T350, which is a smaller car with a slightly smaller engine, a 3.6 litre straight six rather than the Tuscan's four litre. And that's a front engined rear wheel drive straight six sports car as well. And that came in coupe or target top version with two removable panels. So it's quite obvious and logical therefore that the people at TBR must have gone you know what we're missing? We're missing a front-engined, rear-wheel drive, two-seater car where the roof comes off. Officially, this is replacing the Chimera and the Griffith, which were laid to rest a couple of years earlier. Uh, now, this, unsurprisingly, did not continue with the venerable but very old Rover V8. This instead used the 3.6-litre straight-six engine, as in the T350s. And tomorrow's a bit of an oddity, but you know what? In this colour, nicely clean, it looks stunning. Let me show you around it. It's the typical kind of TVR madness at the front with all sorts of scallops and scoops and all sorts of things going on, a pretty low front. The paintwork is awesome. No, it's not immaculate. There are a few little stone chips and things in the front, but generally this thing looks awesome. Again, I apologise for the fact that it's a bit wet, but it is in very good condition. And this is currently owned by the people at John Ashley and is up for sale at 24 and a half grand, which is not a lot at all for a Tamora. You've got a nice big boot in the back as well. Very typical TVR thing, loads and loads of space. There's that standard exhaust and this sort of huge protruding and slightly weird diffuser at the back that looks really aftermarket, but I'm pretty sure is not. Now this is technically a convertible, but it's also a target top kind of thing. I'm not really a fan of this. This does ruin it a little bit for me, this whole kind of thing up here. This is a solid panel with stores in the back and this then folds down. As you would expect, the interior is typical TVR bonkers. Usual thing, you've got a little button under here which gets you into the car. Now you've got a green and cream interior on this one and uh, just look at that. That's a little bit more sensible than the Tuscan. It's details as well, like the fact that the windows are no longer operated by little rotary dials, but instead switches, which work much, much better. And the gauges are nearly normal. You've still got the usual bespoke switch gear, which I think is super cool. Standard five-speed manual gearbox, and it's otherwise business as usual in here. What is, however, really different to the Tuscan is the fact that you can pop the bonnet. And here you are, the actually rather pretty Speed 6 engine. Doesn't have the best reputations this power plant, but having spoken to quite a lot of TVR people, both owners and specialists, a couple of things have become very clear. Later cars are better, and the 3.6 is a much stronger unit for whatever reason as well. So when you're looking at these, I wouldn't be quite as cautious as I would be with, say, something like a really early Tuscan. And it is such a pretty engine, but in the Tuscan, it's hidden by this panel that's not very easy to get off. And at least in here, you can see it. It's a nice thing, and it is the proper recipe for a British sports car. Big engine at front, driving the back, two seats in the middle, manual gearbox, 
roof comes down, and none of this nanny state rubbish trying to save you from killing yourself. Now the idea of an entry level TVR is a bit of an amusing one really. It's sort of like baby's first minigun. I mean for a start this wasn't a cheap car, £43,000. It's a lot of money now and it was definitely a lot of money back then. And on paper this isn't dramatically different to the other models in the TVR lineup either. 350 horsepower might not have been quite as much as some of the 4 litre cars but it's near enough the same and this weighs hardly anything. Official figures are about 1060 kilos and in reality it's not a lot more than that. And you can really feel that lightness when you're piloting this car through some nice curves like this. Even at very modest speed the car responds absolutely beautifully. You see the thing about TVRs is that they actually do handle. Sure, if you want to take them to the ragged edge and you want to take liberties with them when the conditions are poor I've no doubt whatsoever that they can and will bite you however when the conditions are good and the car is well set up and it's got decent tyres on it they are incredibly enjoyable to pilot at what anybody would consider a very decent speed this one is once you get used to it also very easy to drive the most frustrating thing about it is the fact that the clutch pedal is actually very light and has an incredibly long travel. You just sort of touch it and it kind of falls to the floor and then it actually moves quite a long way before finally biting. So it does make getting used to it a little tricky. But once you are, it's actually very easy to modulate and a lovely car to just bimble in. And having that standard exhaust also means that just going along at a modest speed is actually very pleasant. Of course, if you then decide you want to go bonkers, it will do that as well. Now this isn't geared quite as long as the Tuscan, but it's certainly not lacking for pace. You've really got to rev that engine out to get the best out of it. Another oddity of these dials is the fact that I have absolutely no idea what the rev limit is. I think it's around about 7,000. So you just kind of make what you can out of it. But the car picks up very well from low down and you've got this very nice, if somewhat letterbox view when you've got the roof on. Fortunately, we decided to tempt fate and take the roof off so that we can enjoy a TVR as is intended. This really is just so nice and in fact it's been obviously about a month or so since I drove that Tuscan but I'd almost say that this handles better you know. The seats are pretty comfy although they do move a little bit more than I would like. I'd probably be tempted to put some sort of aftermarket numbers in here. The TVR seats were never the best assembled and I think an aftermarket solution would be my choice although they do look pretty cool. The five-speed gearbox in here, just as with the Tuscan, is a delight to use. Not the most advanced gearbox, but honestly it suits the car to a T. It's amazing just how much of a difference having a slightly different exhaust on the car can actually make. Really does change its character. And okay, I would want it to be louder. Definitely would, because it just feels a bit wrong driving this and it sounding like that. But this is still a TVR. It's still mad. You can see things poking everywhere. It's all a, a little bit unrefined, but quite wacky. Yeah, you know, it's a sort of kid at school that he doesn't always succeed, but he tries so damned hard, you can't help but admire him. Even little things like healing and towing like that are actually nice and easy, something I miss about older cars. There are rests for your arms. The steering wheel feels just about right. There is some adjustment in the column. It's not even that windy in here. We've got the rear section folded down and I've got a, a little bit of breeze blowing through my hair and that's about it. It's actually quite restrained. Very unusual for a TVR. I can feel loads of hot air wafting up from below the gear selector. Another very typical TVR thing they do get rather warm especially when they have cats in them and that's one of the uh, <coughs> official reasons 
a lot of people choose to decap them is to get rid of that excess heat and just help the car breathe a little bit better and the engine certainly benefits from it as well but I had this car I'm not really sure what I do with regards to that perhaps a nice halfway house and get some sports cats and I think that's what I'd really want from this car somewhere between what this is now and what that Tuscan was you know a, a little shoutier but not the full Brian blessed the real tragedy of this car honestly is the fact that by the time these were built TVRs were genuinely better put together everything in here still feels very handmade but it is just a bit more solid a bit more well screwed together than those earlier cars it, it does make a difference there's a few Ford bits which have sort of started to appear in here as well. The key is Ford. I suspect the steering column is Ford as well. I recognize one of the air vents as a Ford item too. Obviously TVR was starting to go, okay, we need to actually make some money from these cars that we were building. Nikolai Smolensky was TVR's owner around about when this car was being made and he put an awful lot of time, effort and money into trying to make the company and the cars much, much better. Sadly, it was just too little too late because TVR died regardless. And they are going to be coming back soon, although at the minute it's not looking too good for them and I can't really tell whether they've actually learned from previous mistakes or not. However, this little Tamora, the idea of this being your first TVR, it's still a TVR. This is not a first sports car for anybody, heavens no, that would be a terrible idea. But you know what? If you're looking for the experience of the Blackpool Rocket and you don't want some of the hassle that you get with some of the earlier cars and you want something that's maybe a little more get in and go, you could do a lot worse. And this one at 24 and a half grand from John Ashley is actually really, really good value because, well, if you look at tomorrow prices, you can see that they are fairly in demand and um, this one's keenly priced. If I had the money, I would.